Welcome to this video about the warp stabilizer in Premiere Pro. I have here different scenes on which I will show you how the warp stabilizer works. So I'll start with the first one. I'll just drag it into my timeline now. And this is the scene we will be working on. As you can see, I used a 30 millimeter lens without image stabilization to make this macro shot. And the, on the corners especially, you can see how sh that it is slightly shaky. So what we can do now is that we apply the warp stabilizer. But before we do that, I will cut the video to the length that I need it. Now this is just a sample, so I just assume I only need this much of the video because when we apply the warp stabilizer, it will analyze every single frame of the footage. So it is in total 91 frames by 25 frames per second. And if I would have left it on the whole length, it would now take forever, while now it only takes a few seconds. Um, it depends on your CPU how long it uh, takes, but for me it's usually quite fast. So first it analyzed it, now it stabilized it. We have here different options we can choose out of. We can go on smooth motion or no motion. In this scene I could use no motion, but usually I go with smooth, smooth motion, because with no motion you have a bigger chance of getting results which are not very natural anymore. So have a look, let's have a look now how it looks like. You can see it's now super steady. There is no shakiness at all anymore. So this was a quite simple sample. Let's now look on a sample which is much harder. There's a scene, I think I recorded this with like 80 millimeter or something like that. And you can see it's like super shaky. It's, it's like horribly shaky. And I also already I applied the warp stabilizer, now I will activate it. And you can see that it's so much smoother and we still don't have any non-wanted results. What you can always see is, um, what it does is that it actually crops in a little bit, usually not a lot, but it slightly crops in and then it works. Let's have a look on a scene where we have a uh, moving, where our picture is moving, where it's not still. So this is a scene me with the static cam. It's quite steady, but especially if you look in this area, you can see it's actually not perfect. And when we activate now the warp stabilizer, again, it slightly crops in and now look on this corner, for example. See, there's nothing shaking anymore. It's now really smooth. So my static cam shot looks much better. Here we have one more scene. You can see it's slightly shaky again. It's the 30 millimeter lens without image stabilization. And it's a little bit shaky. So let's see how, what we can do about it. We again use the warp stabilizer. It is not shaky anymore. But you could see why, by using the warp stabilizer we got some results which we don't really want. And we can see that the distortion is now much smaller, which we get as a result, but it is still there, which is of course annoying. So what we can do now is that we don't use subspace warp. Sorry for the loud filter, by the way, that's my laptop. I can't do anything about that, but we use position scale and rotation. So now it stabilizes again. And let's have a look how it looks now. It's again only on 10%, on but since it now uses a different method, we don't have the warping anymore. We have a bit of the zoom effect again, I have the feeling, still, but I think it's really usable. It is not as smooth anymore because we're only on 10%, on but I think that's the best result we can get. If we look on it again without anything, look how horrible that that was. I mean, come on. Okay. Um, in general, I always start with the subway uh, warp, and if that doesn't work, I go on 10%. And if this still doesn't work, then I go on position scale and rotation. Um, we also have the different framing options. If you do stabilize only, then you can see we have some black lines here called it doesn't crop. If we go on stabilize and, and crop, that still is only p half of the work because it also has to do auto scaling in order, like it is now squared, 
but it still didn't auto scale it and we own and we still have to do auto scale so it actually is on the full frame if we would now do synthesize edge i don't do it what it would do is that it doesn't auto scale but and it doesn't crop but instead the missing part it would um calculate it what which which color which information should should be there and then it will put it in so you don't have a crop anymore but this is very um, computer consuming power con power consuming for the cpu and my laptop can't handle that and also especially when, when we have a moving scene there is no way or very difficult for the laptop to really analyze it correctly so i think it is better just to have this slight crop that's it um, just to remind you again make sure that you always first cut it to the length you really need it and then analyze because it has to look on every single frame and this is very time consuming and other than that thanks for watching if you have any further questions then feel free to write in the comments and i will be happy to help you see you